Good morning, everybody, and happy Thanksgiving, America. It is time for another live crochet along here at the Jada and Stitches show. Uh, I know we might have a smaller than normal group of people watching today, and that's perfectly fine. I assume it's a busy one <laughs> for a lot of the people who watch. But for those of you who have got us on in the background for a little bit of company, hello, hello. Uh, and for those of you who just sort of want to hang out and maybe make something along with me, hello and welcome. And uh, let's talk about what we're going to do today. We have a link to the original tutorial in the description box. Um, back in 2020, around Valentine's Day, we made something we called the Sweetheart Gift Bag. And today, I'm going to change up the yarn and the hook, and I'm going to make a Christmas version. I love reusable gift bags. They're one of the best things you can have in the stash. They make any little gift, no matter how simple or fancy, that much more unique and sweet. Um, people can keep the bag and use the bag for their own purposes. They can also turn around and re-gift it if they want. So reusable gift bags are just wonderful and they're a great way to use up scrap yarn. They're a great way to experiment with novelty yarn because you can really use just about anything you want for a um, gift bag. So today I'm going to use our Sweetheart gift bag pattern. It's also today's sneaky sale. Um, it's available in the Etsy shop. And also as a quick reminder, we are having a Black Friday sale starting tomorrow on Black Friday in the Etsy shop. So if you've uh, good thinking about doing some Black Friday shopping online, then be sure to pop into our shop and, and uh, Add a few things to your cart if you feel like it. It's the biggest sale of the year we do, so we're kind of looking forward to that. But we do have a sneaky sale today, and that's our little sweetheart gift bag. Um, and that's available. You'll see it up top in the shop if you pop over there. I'm going to use some Christmas yarn today. We're going to decide which one of these beauties I'm going to get into. I've also decided that I'm not even going to bother making a drawstring. We made a really cute drawstring in the original tutorial, which you are more than welcome to do. It's just simply crochet and it's got little hearts on either end of it. But I decided I would dive into my ribbon stash and I went looking for some ribbons, some cording. I'm going to pick one of these to use as my drawstring near the end. We'll see what I'm uh, kind of in the mood for. And I've got everything else I need. So I'm using a size four medium weight yarn today. This is acrylic. Uh, both of these are the same. They're both size four. They're both acrylic. This one just is, uh, I love it. This is absolute Christmas. And this one is too, but there's more white in it. And it's also got some tinsel some little sparkle running through it. So uh, if Mr. and Stitches wants to get a poll going immediately and we'll decide which one of these gorgeous things I'm gonna use. So either the mostly green one or the sparkle one. Hello everyone. And uh, oh my gosh, look what's um, going on in the chat. We've got all kinds of supers flying here. So <laughs> you might wanna catch up with that stuff. Holy smokes, holy smokes. All right. Um, um, I'll do the poll after you catch up. Okay, you can start typing it in. It's well, uh, We're gonna decide which one of these yarns I'm gonna use today. Okay, so I'm gonna do, um, they're both Christmassy. So yeah, the so one Christmassy. On the left and the one on the right. One's, no, one's got tinsel in it. I, you can't tell, can you hold it closer to the camera? Yes, this one has that tinsel one has in it. That one has tinsel, okay. Yeah. So this one's regular Christmas. This one has tinsel in it. Okay. Reg <laughs> regular Christmas or the tinsel yarn? Yes. Okay. I'd like to welcome Sally to Vicuña. Thank you, Sally, for visiting and entering the Vicuña membership. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Nico with a gifted membership. Thank you so much, Nico. Nico has gifted a membership and Barb has won it. Welcome back, Barb. Thank you so much. Carolyn, <laughs> Caroline, excuse me, has also gifted a membership. Thank you. And it looks like Marlene has won it. Welcome to the family, Marlene. And Sally, Sally has gifted a membership too. Thank you so much. And Malou, who has won it? That's so cute. Welcome to the family, Malou. Um, Sally has just gifted, good Lord, 10 memberships. Am I reading that right? What? Oh my gosh, thank yes, you, Sally. That's 10 memberships. Holy all cow. All at once. Thank you. Oh, oh my, my gosh, God, look at thank this. Thank you so much. Look <laughs> at this gigantic pile of new members. Ms. Red, <laughs> Tammy, Rachel, Kelly, Amber, Claudia, Edith, Brittany, Sylvia, Eileen, 
Thank you guys. Welcome aboard. Sally, thank you so much. Um, later after the show, be sure to check out the community tab on our YouTube channel. We just put up a post for Silk and Vicuña members yesterday um, with the information on how to get into the Silk and Vicuña member webpage that we have over on our website. We have sort of a members only page over there. Um, so be sure to check that out after the stream and we'll put a link up again about it later. Um, okay, goodness me, thank you guys so much. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We are definitely grateful for you guys. Here in Canada, we celebrate Thanksgiving back in October, but we feel like we, since we have so many friends and family south of the border that we, uh, we consider ourselves honorary, honorary Americans, and we're happy to celebrate Thanksgiving along with you guys too. So let's get into today's project right after I thank Kelly. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. Kelly has also gifted a membership and Aaron won it. Goodness gracious. Welcome back, Aaron. Thank you guys so much. Mr. and Stitches, have you got that poll going? Yes, it's up on the chat. Okay, so while you so guys vote. You, need to tap on, you might need to tap on it for to get it to open up. Yes, while well, you guys vote or on which on one. It. This is the mostly green. This one has a little bit of tinsel. Um, I'll be using either one of these. Um, they're both gorgeous, but whichever one you guys vote on. I've got a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a stitch marker, quite handy for working in the round. I've got my measuring tape. You don't really need this, but I'm just curious to see how much this sizes up because the original pattern was done using a fingering weight yarn and I'm using a larger hook and a larger yarn today. So I'm gonna see how big this makes my little gift bag. And of course I've got some ribbons and some, some little decor. I've got a, like a cute little bow. I've got some tassels. I may or may not use this stuff, but we're gonna see what it looks like when it's all done. But one of these will be my little drawstring. Okay, so I'm gonna get these out of the way. I'm gonna get rid of my, I'm gonna keep my yarn needle and my scissors handy. And we're gonna pick a yarn to start. I'm gonna have a little sip of my coffee. A big welcome to everybody who's just dropping in. Uh, we're making the, we're remaking a Christmas version of our sweetheart gift bag today. Nothing like a reusable gift bag. I absolutely love these things. As soon as we get to, oh, I don't know, a good number of votes on the poll for which yarn I'm gonna use, we'll get going. Um, I'm using a five millimeter hook today in conjunction with my uh, size four medium weight acrylic yarn. I would like to have a shell stitch that isn't terribly gapey. So I don't want giant holes showing. I want to show off that pretty shell stitch pattern but I don't want big spaces between the shells because I don't want to give away what's in the bag. Although you could certainly wrap something with a little bit of tissue, uh, tissue paper, and that will also add to the nice sound inside that bag. So I'm going to use a five millimeter. This is also known as an H or an eight, along with my size five, size four medium weight yarn. But the, um, the hook size is up to you. And if you are going to size up to like a chunky weight yarn, like a size five chunky or bulky, I should say, then you would probably want to use a slightly larger hook. Um, but this is a very forgiving pattern. So feel free to experiment with yarn weight and fiber and hook size. Um, and there's really no wrong <laughs> combination for this project. Uh, how are we doing on the poll votes, mister? We have... 115 votes. 115. Okay, let's call it there. Yes, unique DK would work just perfectly fine. UK is about a, I should say, DK weight yarn, double knit yarn is about a size three. Um, and that's very close to this one. This is a four weight, but it's on the skinnier side of four. This is a four weight, but it's on the more sort of middle to thicker end of the four weight category. So this is why I've chosen my five millimeter hook. Um, this hook would probably work with the DK or you could go down another half size to like four and a half millimeter or like a size seven thereabouts. Um, but absolutely any yarn weight works. So dive into your stash, find your scraps, your that pretty Christmas yarn, whatever it is you, you think you wanna use up and we'll make a bag with it. It's just perfect. Tinsel yarn has won ba -ba, with 58% of the vote. So that is the one we are gonna go for. Here we go. I'm gonna get my end out, get my scissors and stuff to the side. Make sure that I am got everything. Oops, I don't wanna start with a knot. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start with a slip knot and we're gonna chain 30 to begin. We're gonna build this bag from the bottom up. All right, 
point. There's 30 chains and already I'm really liking that simplicity. It's uh, it's technically variegated, but it's almost like a short striping yarn because there's a little bit of a stripe action going there. So once you've chained 30, we're going to use the half double crochet stitch to just establish a little bottom to our bag. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one and work three half double crochets into it. And I'm just going to mark the top of that first half double crochet with my stitch marker just so I know where I am when I get back to it. I'm going to half double crochet in each of the next 27 chains. And I, I really like the tinsel that runs through this yarn. Um, but because it's sort of like a mixed media yarn, um, and this one's nicely done, I think this is the Burnett Happy Holidays yarn. Um, I do find every once in a while that my hook wants to kind of slip in between the tinsel and the yarn, uh, but this is fairly well wound, so that doesn't happen very often. But um, does anyone else find that if they've ever experimented with sort of mixed media yarn, yarn that has tinsel or sequins or something running through it, do you find that you know your hook catches on the odd little, the little bit of it? I don't feel like that's a deal breaker by any stretch. Anything with a little bit of sparkle running through it usually catches my attention. And making sure that I'm not twisting my foundation row. I agree, Nico. I love to give homemade, I love to make, give gifts in homemade bags. I'm trying to keep this little tail from working itself into my foundation row. Homemade gift bags are just like, they're just, they're charming. They're, they're a real conversation starter. People love them. I mean, they're a big part of the gift. Into the last chain. So the last chain you come to after half double crocheting into those 27 middle chains, you're going to work three half double crochet into the last chain. And then we're going to sort of turn ourselves around and half double crochet in each of these foundation stitches all the way back. So you're just sort of working a half double crochet opposite the half double crochet on the other side of the foundation chain. I'm going to work over top of that little short tail. So there's going to be 27 half double crochet running backwards along the other side of your foundation chain row. And I'm going to make sure that I'm really working this little short tail in as I go. So I work a couple of half double crochets and then I pull on that tail because I want to keep that end nice and snug if you can sort of see that there. So there's my three half double crochet at the tail end and now I'm working half double crochets all the way back along the foundation chains on the other side. I really like starting gift bags like this. I think it's fun to work a project in the round. And since we're using a shell stitch, we are joining our rows with a slip stitch, um, but there's no real visible seam because of the way the shell stitch works. So I kind of like that. It's such a quick and easy little pattern. And once you make one, you can sort of tweak it going forward. You can say, oh, okay, I know what my tension's going to do with this pattern, so I'm going to work more rows because I want a taller bag, or I'm going to work shorter rows because I don't need a bag that's quite as tall, or maybe I'll use a, a smaller weight yarn and a smaller hook. I'll use up some stash yarn and I'll make a smaller bag, or I'll try some super big yarn and a super big hook and try an even bigger bag. So once you've half double crocheted in each of those 27 chains all the way back, that brings you back to the very beginning and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet we made. And that is row one. So row one works all the way down your foundation chain row, turns around the end, works all the way back, and then joins with a slip stitch. So you've got a little sort of long oval piece. I have a sip of my coffee. All right, let's get into that shell stitch. Right where we are, we're going to chain three. 
and into the same place that we joined. So if you have trouble seeing it, just pull up a little bit on that knot and it'll kind of tug up on that space. You're gonna work two more double crochet into that same stitch. And that is the first shell of the row. I'm gonna mark it with my stitch marker. If you're new to working the shell stitch in the round, I highly recommend always marking the beginning with a stitch marker just so if your tension's a little bit tight or a little bit loose or you, you know, you're you working a little bit distracted, when you get back to the beginning of the row, you'll recognize it for the beginning of the row, you'll join and you'll start the next row in the right place and you won't end up accidentally kind of working over top of it. We're not chaining in between our shells. We're just going to skip two stitches, go to the next stitch and work a shell into it. Three double crochet, that's one shell. Skip two stitches, skip, skip, find the next one and work three double crochet into it. So it's skip two stitches, work three double crochet or one shell into the next stitch. And we're gonna do that all the way around, skip, skip. And this is the establishing row of the shell stitch pattern. So it's gonna have us kind of going around the corners on either end. Mr. and Stitches is sharing the community tab link in this, the, uh, the chat there. So if you are a member, a new member, um, if you're just a subscriber or you're curious, please feel free to click on that link. It'll take you to our uh, community tab and we post stuff there for everybody. I'm just slowly working my way down that first side and you might find that that first corner wants to curl already into kind of a, a boat shape. That's great. If it doesn't, that's fine. It just means that your tension's a little bit looser than mine. It will eventually fold itself into a bit of a boat. So don't worry about it. A little bit of tissue wrapped around the gift inside these bags is really pretty because you can see a bit of the tissue through the spaces in between the shells. And like I said, it kind of gives it a nice sound. I like the sound of tissue paper. Skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. Skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. And I've turned the other corner. So now if I lay it down here, there's one side done with the shell stitch and both of my little corners are kind of turning into that boat. They want to turn into a, it's going to look like a bit of a canoe, canoe shape. Skip two, three double crochet. At the end of row two, we're gonna have 20 shells or 60 stitches. So it's the same number of stitches you would have had at the end of row one. So we chained 30 to begin. At the end of row one, we have 60 half double crochet stitches. And then for row two and beyond, we're kind of swapping out the half double crochet stitches for double crochet shells, but the stitch count doesn't actually change. So you always have 60 stitches, but they're arranged into shells and you have 20 shells. And I just find counting up the individual shells is a lot easier than counting up the individual stitches. So 20 shells all the way around for each row. Skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. Skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. I'm curious, I would love to know chat. Is there like a traditional kind of breakfast that maybe you make on Thanksgiving day? When you get to the end of row one, find the top of that chain three. That's what I had marked with my stitch marker. Slip stitch to join and that is row one complete. I'm gonna pull up on my loop. And here's that little canoe that I was telling you about. So you've got both of your little ends kind of curling up. If they're not curling up yet, don't worry, they will. Uh, but you can also sort of fold it. And that's the bottom edge of our bag started. And let's see how big that is. So this is how wide the bag's gonna be. 
at least for me, using the hook and yarn that I'm using. It's really springy, this yarn, so. Um, eight inches across. That's a nice width. Eight inches across. So an eight inches or 20 centimeters, that's how wide my bag's going to be. When you join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that begins each row, you slip stitch into the next stitch. This is going to be the middle of the shell. So there's three double crochet. The first one is a chain three. You join a row in the top of the chain three, and then you slip stitch into the next stitch, which is the middle of the shell. And this is where you start every single row. You're starting in the middle of a shell because this, are, this is sort of a stacked shell stitch pattern. So instead of working it into the spaces like a granny square, we are stacking the shells on top of each other. So right there, you chain three and work two double crochet into the same stitch. And this is the middle of a shell. So you can see there's the, I'm going to just get my hook out of the way. This is the shell from row one. And this is the shell now from row two that sits right in the middle of it. And I'm going to mark that with my stitch marker. And now you look for the next shell. So you skip the space, you look for the next shell, find the middle stitch and work three double crochets into it. Alternatively, you can still think of it in terms of skip to work three double crochet into the next stitch. Because if you're looking at the top, here's a stitch, here's a stitch, here's the third stitch, which is where you work the new shell or three double crochet. But if you're looking at it sideways, you're just working for the next, looking for the next shell stitch and the middle stitch in the middle. So you can look at it either way you want, uh, whatever visual helps you. Skip two stitches, three double crochet into the next stitch, or find the next shell, find the middle stitch, and work three double crochet into the top of it. So I am going to just pop into the chat here. Chocolate cappuccino coffee with mocha creamer is today's breakfast for me, says Marie, and that sounds absolutely, I just, I'm just starting to salivate. Oh my gosh. Mar Marlene says, no traditional breakfast. Nope, gotta have room for the big lunch, says Crochet Crazy. That does make sense. Yes, yes. Cold cereal. Prince says, cold cereal in the kitchen. Yes, you know what? If you've got a lot going on, you just gotta grab something quick. Sharon says, we graze all day. I love grazing. We, we, ha we save our tummies for dinner, says Beans. <laughs> We starve ourselves. You know what? I think this might be uh, this might be the, the the habit here. Denise, no traditional breakfast, but my husband just made eggs, bacon, and potatoes with peppers and onions. Oh my gosh, that sounds delicious! Woo! We have uh, we have some leftovers for uh, lunch today, but uh, we had we had a little piece of toast and an apple. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing fantastic, but, you know, does the trick, gets you through to the next meal. I think we're kind of the same, eh, sweetie, on Thanksgiving? If we've got, like, a big meal coming, like, for Thanksgiving or Easter or Christmas, we don't really eat until the big meal, do we? Um, I don't know. That bacon and eggs breakfast sounds like a pretty good tradition Yeah, yeah that me. might have to become the new tradition around here. <laughs> um... Yeah, I would say we typically don't have a, a traditional breakfast. Kind of wait for the big meal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think if you're the one cooking, you get up and you get going. There's just so much to do in the kitchen when you are hosting. When you're preparing something like that. Oh, yeah. There a, is like no time to eat. There is no time to think. A whole day event, possibly a few days. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm doing the big <laughs> cook, then I'm not eating. I'm just sort of... The smells, I think, kind of keep me going. I don't really, I don't really nibble on anything. I'll definitely be sipping my coffee as I work, but. Stuffed waffles. Excuse me? Stuffed with ham, bacon, cream cheese, and topped with cinnamon and honey. Are you kidding me? Mela, that sounds amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, and there's a parade today. Oh my gosh. Is that early in the morning or is that the afternoon? What time is that parade? When you get to the end of a row, 
Remove your stitch marker, find the top of your chain three, join with a slip stitch, and then slip stitch right into the next stitch just to prepare yourself for the next row. And here we go. I am two rows in um, of to the shell stitch. This is technically th row three because row one is that foundation row of half double crochet. Row one, we established the shell stitch and, or I should say row two, we established the shell stitch. And by row three, we are off to the races. And from here on out, it's the same. You start every row the same, you finish every row the same. Every row has 20 shell stitches in it or 60 stitches, however you wanna count it. And I'm gonna work 15 rows in total, but you can work as many or as few rows as you want, depending on how tall or short you need this shell stitch bag to be. And I'm going to mark the first stitch or the first shell of every row, just so I don't have to really think too much. I like that visual reminder when I get back around to it to know that, oh, oh right, I gotta close off a row and start another one. And rows are really easy to count. I'm gonna get a few rows in so you can sort of see a larger piece of fabric and then I'll show you how I count them. Oops. It starts at 11 a.m. Central on CBS, says, says Kim. So that's the parade, 11 a.m. Central. That is, Central is, does that mean it's happening right now? I <laughs> Central would be a couple of hours ahead? Behind? No, behind. A couple of hours behind. Something like that. I think. So I guess that means it's going to start um, in an hour or so? Hi, Wikabella. Welcome, welcome. We're making a Christmas version of the Sweetheart gift bag today. You'll find the link to the original tutorial in the description box. And I've switched up to a size four medium weight Christmas yarn. I'm using a five millimeter hook and I am gonna work 15 rows in total. I'm not crocheting a drawstring today. I'm gonna use some pretty cord or ribbon and um, we'll see where the live stream takes us from there. Uh, this is gonna be a larger version than the original one because the original one we used a fingering weight, a sock weight size one yarn. So this is already just gonna size up the bag. Great reusable gift bag. Nico, <laughs> thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted a membership. Nico is so sweet. And An Anagarama, 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 did I say that right? Anagarama has gift, has been, has won it. Congratulations and welcome. I hope I'm saying that right. Anagarama. 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 I like that. <laughs> 11 a.m. Eastern is 10 a.m. Central. Okay, so that means that it is going to start in about an hour. The, the parade, I should say. Um, I wonder if you can also uh, watch that on a streaming service or on YouTube live because it's a... Uh... Well, I have it's to like assume. A public parade, is I it have not? to assume someone is probably there streaming. Oh it? yeah, I mean for sure. I mean this is YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> they put the replay online. Is that the one with all the big balloons oh. you kind of see every year, like the super huge balloons? Maybe Kim says they put the replay online so you can watch it later. So that's nice. Oh okay, that's cool. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Slip stitch into the next. It is stitch. on YouTube Live. Awesome. All right, this this is going to be so fun. This is such a classic yarn, and this is such a this is going to be such a classic looking gift bag. I just I love it. So I'm I'm already three rows in to the shell stitch. I should say I just finished row four, and you can sort of see the shells. They're stacked right on top of each other. So row one was the row of half double crochet. So in order to count, you just look for that first row of shell stitch. Very easy to see. And then you just count them because they sit right on top of each other. There's row two, row three, and row four. So I'm gonna just motor here until I get to row 15. Chain three, two double crochet into the same place, which is the middle stitch of the shell just below it. I'm gonna mark it and I'm 
gonna continue. Three double crochet into the middle stitch of each shell all the way around to get that stacked shell stitch going. Diane says she's watching it right now. Okay, so the parade's on right now. I feel, uh, I feel a f uh, the, all the time changes. And the, I'm still, still recuperating from, from falling back. I'm still confused by who's doing what where. So there's, there are, used to be more balloons and less musical theater. There's like musical theater in it. Wow. I, we, I don't think I've ever seen a Thanksgiving Day parade. Um, I don't think we do Thanksgiving parades here in Canada, do we, sweetie? Um, nothing, nothing huge. There might be some small stuff, like from town to town. Like I know, um, typically there's like a like a lot of towns have fall fairs, and there's a fall fair parade. Um, but the fall fairs are typically late August, early September. I'm looking at a. I'm looking at uh, a stream here on YouTube, and it says streamed an hour ago, and it's two hours long. Oh. So I, I wonder if it's past. It's past, maybe. It's like a morning thing. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, then I hope it was good. I hope if anybody watched it, they enjoyed it. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but is there not like a football game or something today or this weekend like a big deal football game is that the super bowl or i don't know this stuff i just feel like every every uh, american like thanksgiving movie has the guys sitting around watching a football game so i'm just like is that a thing Greendale, Wisconsin. Okay, thanks, Diane. So there is a, a football game on. Oh, that's so cozy. Having the game on in the background. I like that. And there's a football game tomorrow, says Rose. Okay, oops. Dallas Cowboys always played on Thanksgiving, says Nico. Hmm. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three and slip stitch into the next stitch. Ta -da! Chain three, two double crochet into the same place. And this starts my next row. There we go. And I'm going to work three double crochet into the middle stitch of each shell all the way around bag is growing quickly. I may not need all 15 rows, but we shall see. Another reason that I like these sort of repeating stitch patterns for things like blankets or bags, if you change up the yarn, if you change up the hook, um, you can change the number of rows that you end up repeating to really get sort of the, the size bag that you want. I think, you know, uh, scale wise, this might still really look good if I do all 15 rows. Um, but we'll see. I think once this pattern gets established, it moves along nice and quickly. So I feel like it's a fairly easy pattern to eyeball. I'm always looking for that middle stitch so that I keep my shells stacked upon each other. And uh, I feel like it moves along pretty nicely. I find the double crochet stitch to be pretty quick. I think I can do double crochets a little faster than I can do single crochets. Thank <laughs> you. 
my goodness, Sally, thank you so much. The one thing I will say about yarn that has like a little bit of tinsel running through it is that you can really feel the tinsel after a while. Like if, if you've got sort of sensitive fingers or maybe dry skin, I do not, luckily, I'm grateful for that. Um, but if you do, you might find that to be a little bit troublesome, unless it's like a soft kind of tinsel-y um, material that they use. Um, this one I can, it's not bothering me, but I can feel it kind of, I can feel it standing out from the rest of the yarn. Um, I know like so many of us ha are very, like, I guess just sort of the nature of the game. If you're into needle arts, you're probably going to be rather tactile oriented. And anything that you feel regularly, like you kind of have gun running through your fingers, you're going to become very familiar with the feel of it, which is why I think we, we all love like really soft yarns and... Um, you know, you get a, a new yarn and you feel it sometimes first before you even really think about the color or how much yarn might be in the skein. You kind of pick it up and you go, ooh, that feels nice. Um, this is a very springy yarn. I don't mind it. It's definitely not something I would wear. So it's great for a gift bag because that tinsel gives it just a little bit of extra strength while keeping kind of a fun, bouncy, fluffy feel or texture to the yarn. Um, but I wouldn't want to crochet with this for hours and hours at a time because I feel like that little bit of, of tinsel running through it is just irritating enough that I think it would, it would bother me after a while, but I'll definitely be able to get through this, this gift bag without it becoming too much of an issue. Um, but does anyone else find that if you would like kind of quirky things about yarn that you either super really like, or maybe kind of drives you a little bit bonkers? <laughs> get this row done and then I'll count out my rows and see where I'm at. This is another thing I like about these projects. I don't really pay attention to the row I'm on if I know I have to do a few in succession. I just sort of turn my brain off and start crocheting and see how far I get before I count them up. <laughs> Stacia, thank you so much. And happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving if you're just popping in and you are celebrating today. Uh, we're Canadians, so we had our Thanksgiving back in October, but I'm happy to take on another another holiday. <laughs> we'll take a free holiday. We'll, we'll take an extra holiday. Why not? Especially if there's tasty food to eat. Oh, that's the best kind of holiday. Mm -hmm. So Amazing Stripes, or Unique Stripes says that she thinks it depends on the tinsel. I agree. I, I mean, I've used yarn that had um, sequins in it, and it didn't bother me at all. And you'd think that that would be kind of a funny thing, feeling the odd sequin going through your fingers. But maybe because it was sporadic, it wasn't as, as sort of noticeable. But um, this is this is noticeable. It's not, it's not deal-breaking, but it's noticeable. But that also may have something to do with the way I hold my yarn. I'm not sure. Yarn squeaking is too tight tension, says <laughs> Desiree. Um, yes, or it's the combination of the yarn fiber and your hook. So, for example, if I'm using that Bernat blanket yarn, that polyester fluffy blanket yarn, it squeaks. It squeaks no matter what's, what hook I'm using because <laughs> it's just typically a, a plastic hook that I'm using. And it that, that polyester... Um, uh, that that slightly soft kind of soft short piled fluffy yarn it squeaks like crazy and it's um doesn't matter what hook I'm <laughs> how big the hook is I'm using. I don't like squeaky yarn. I agree. <laughs> squeaky yarn is kind of irksome. All right, back to the beginning of the row, joining with a slip stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch. I've definitely got a little bag going now. This is definitely the bottom half of a little gift bag. Oh my gosh, and look at what's happening. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, that is a happy accident. Oh my gosh. 
So I've got... <laughs> it looks like peppermint stripes. How cool is it that? It looks like a candy cane for sure. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm just delighted by that. Okay. Quick count. Row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm at row seven, so it means I'm halfway through. Fantastic. Uh, I think row 15 is the target row for me. So I'm going to work first shell of the row, mark it out, and off I go. Three double crochet into the middle stitch of each previous shell, all the way around. I agree. Happy accidents are the best, Maeve. <laughs> this is so cool. I guess um, I'm using the right... I've got the right tension or the right stitch count or something. It just sort of... That quote-unquote planned pooling thing is sort of happening here. Lovely. Welcome, welcome. If you are just joining us, we are making a Christmas version of the Sweetheart reusable gift bag. We have a tutorial for that. We have it linked down below. So if you want to uh, check it out later for the succinct version. In the original, we used a fingering weight size one sock weight yarn. We used Manny Petty by Lion Brand, which I really love. Um, and we used a smaller hook, so we got a real darling of a little gift bag out of it, which is sort of designed for special things like, you know, little boxes of jewelry or little little candies or something. We kind of designed it with, with um, Valentine's Day in mind. But I thought, since we are heading into the festive season, it might be fun to revisit that pattern and try it using um, a larger hook and a medium weight Christmas yarn. And just uh, make the pattern exactly, but just with the upsized hook and yarn and see where we go. I'm not going to bother crocheting the drawstring. We have a crochet drawstring included in the original tutorial, but I'm going to use ribbon or cording. I've sort of rated my, my, my yarn stash bag today, or I should say my ribbon uh, stash bag. I have, I have fancy ribbons. I have regular ribbons. I have, I have sort of... Um, bobbins full of ribbon but then I've also got like ribbon ends or pieces of ribbon and cording stuff that I've sort of taken off of uh, existing gift bags or things like that and I, I keep all that in like a little bag and um, I dive in there every once in a while when I just need a short amount of ribbon or cording. Every row will have 20 shells or 60 stitches in it. There's no increasing or decreasing throughout. You just kind of keep going around and around and around. I am loving this peppermint stripe thing that happened. Finish every row with a slip stitch in the top of the chain three that begins, and then immediately slip stitch into the middle stitch. And uh, we start the row from there, chain three, two double crochet in the same stitch. So that all of your shells stack on top of each other. And I like to mark the first one, just so I know that I'm at the beginning and I get back around to it so that I can really just turn my brain off and enjoy the crochet process. No counting. Catherine, they do. This is a great project to use up your scraps on. Um, if you want to just make a magic ball and sort of string a bunch of scraps together or just sort of let one little ball end kind of end and then tie in the next one, um, you can absolutely do that. This is a, these are great scrap busting projects. You can, you know, stripe them, 
Um, you can make them kind of crazy and random. Um, it's it's a gift bag and it's a simple repeating pattern. We're using the shell stitch. So no matter what you do color wise, it's gonna look unified. Um, so absolutely go into the stash, pull out the yarns that you, maybe you've got some leftover yarns that you really like, but you don't have enough to make another project with. Um, using really pretty yarns, using novelty yarns to make reusable gift bags, great idea. Cause it just adds to the gift bag. It just makes it look even more special, right? If you are celebrating Thanksgiving today, thank you for also hanging out with us. <laughs> and for the rest of us, uh, let's just pretend that we're on holiday. I, I love the feeling of thinking I'm on holiday, even if I'm not. Almost got another row completed here. I think I might pause and count because I've kind of forgotten where I'm at. So finishing this row with a slip stitch and a slip stitch into the next stitch to prepare for the next row and let's count. Row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine rows, I have six more rows to go. And then we're gonna add a little scallop finish to the top. I'm quite pleased with how this is working out. One of the reasons that this fun little striping effect is happening for me um, is because we are not increasing or decreasing. So if you are using a short self striping yarn like this one or a, a variegated yarn that has kind of longer doses of color, um, you will also get a kind of repeating color pattern because it's not, if you're not increasing or changing your pattern as you work sort of back and forth or work around like I am here with this bag, um, it gives the color an, a, a chance to establish itself and it repeats just as much as you're repeating the stitch or the pattern. Um, so by keeping, uh, maintaining the same stitch count and the same pattern, um, it gives a chance for the color to kind of catch up with itself. So, ah, I just think this is so neat. <laughs> And Crocus with a question. She says, my friend ha gave me her big crochet hook. Gonna make a wreath with it. What kind of thick yarn should I use or maybe fabric? Oh, I love that. Um, if you're using like, like the super big hook, um, you can use a super bulky or an ultra weight yarn, like a size seven, something absolutely mega. Um, you can also use, like you mentioned fabric. Um, you you can cut up sort of strips of it. Um, if you've got like a kind of say polar fleece, something that doesn't um, fray would be a good option, but you can also mix a bunch of yarns together. Um, maybe mix some fabric and yarn together. If you're making a wreath and you're just going to, if you like, cause with a wreath, you're really going for texture, right? Um, you want, you want it to look kind of, I want to, uh, the word inviting is what runs into my head. I guess that's probably because we, we typically put a wreath on a front door. Um, so yeah, if you're going to play with a big hook and make a wreath, then the super ultra bulky weight size seven yarn, mix a couple together if it's a super big hook. Um, or yeah, strips of fabric. Uh, if you're going to use fabric, polar fleece is fun. Um, anything that doesn't fray and maybe strips that are like, one to two inches thick or like up to two and a half centimeters wide. We made um, some wreaths. Oh, I've got one right behind me. I'll grab it. Give me one second. I'm just going to finish this row. 
um, with a super ultra bulky weight yarn. It was a Lion Brand yarn um, by Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart Craft Yarn. I don't think they make it anymore, but I liked it. Hang on, let me grab that. So this is, I've got a whole bunch of these in the craft room. This is a, a super ultra bulky weight yarn. And I think I was using the, the, the 25 millimeter hook, that like one of the really big ones. Um, and I used my little um, wreath pattern. We have it over uh, for free on our website on the pattern workshop page. So if you haven't seen that, please feel free to go and pick it up. Um, that's free to anybody. Over on the pattern workshop page of our website, it's the little wreath pattern. And the original one is made with a medium weight size for acrylic yarn and a regular sized hook. But you can make the exact same pattern, but using the super ultra bulky weight yarn and a giant hook. And it sizes up really nicely. And I added a little bow to it. L, happy Thanksgiving, L. Thank you so much. L with the super chat says, happy Thanksgiving. Be thankful every day. I finally get to join a live today. Missing Jada and Mr. Love to all. Thank you, L. Yes, make gratitude your attitude, my darlings. It is, <laughs> we have so much to be grateful for. <laughs> Some days I don't even know where to start. Uh, thank you so much, Elle. Yeah, so um, this is an example of that super ultra bulky weight yarn. And I, I love that. I mean, I just think that's so cute. And then I have these just sort of hanging around. I made a whole bunch one year. And then you can decorate them any way you want. I just made a little bow. Um, but yeah. A little sip of my water here. Okay, where was I? Let's see now. Mr. and Stitches is quiet today, but I think I can hear him tapping a lot, so. I'm tapping and clicking buttons like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I'm reading the chat, following with the conversation. Yes, he probably is eating all the cookies. If I'm quiet for more than five minutes, I'm eating cookies. <laughs> Nico! Thank you, Nico! Nico has just gifted another membership and Desiree won it. Congratulations, Desiree. Welcome to the family. I think I'm on row 11 now, so I've just got a couple more rows left. And I do like the height of this. So I think 15 rows, I think it does scale up just lovely. Um, by upsizing yarn and hook, I don't need to change the number of rows. If I wanted it taller, of course, I could add more rows if I wanted. So, for example, if you're making this because you have a specific gift in mind that you need a bag for, then, you know, have the gift nearby and you can uh, make it shorter or taller as required. Um, also, if you need a wider bag and a wider base and you don't want to upsize your yarn, your base foundation chain row can be any multiple of three. So I started with 30, I love that, I love that width, but you can make it any multiple of three and the pattern is the same. Um, you'll just have more uh, shell stitches. If you make a, a longer foundation chain row, you'll have more shell stitches in it um, by the time you get to the, that shell stitch pattern. And if you, you start with fewer chains, so a multiple of three that's fewer than 30, you'll have fewer shells all the way around, but any multiple of 30 foundation chains, or I should say any multiple of three, sorry, foundation chains works for this pattern. So feel free to experiment, get the size bag you need, uh, especially if you're gonna be changing up your yarn and hook. Elle, welcome back, my dear. Happy Thanksgiving again, and thanks for, <laughs> thanks for coming back to our members. I assume, I assume we Merlin is somewhere nearby. Bunny Mummy is back. Bunny Mummy. Crocus says, I think I will cut up some green t-shirts and add some sparkle yarn. I think that would be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Betty, if you're buffering, just back out and come, come and click on the link again and it'll reload itself and that should solve any buffering issues. Internet sort of slows down and speeds up all over the place. We got a super, super chat. 
Sally, thank you so much. Sally, with a very generous super chat, says, thank you for the love. You and Mr. and Stitches are such a light in my life and others. I look forward to the Christmas season and the 2024 Blanket Project. Oh, yes. <laughs> Two of my favorite things, the Christmas season and the dawn of a new Blanket Project. I was just watching Cinnamon's uh, recap of her blanket project yesterday. She completed her Fair Isle style blanket. So she went with the, um, we have a tree pattern, a Fair Isle tree pattern available in our shop, a Christmas tree or an evergreen pattern. And she went with that to finish off her year because she needed to get it done. And it looks absolutely adorable. Um, but in particular, I love how she did her sheep. She did the sheep, black, mostly white sheep with one black sheep, love it, against a green background. And there's just something about that green. I just love it. Um, and as anybody who wants to share their blanket photos with us, uh, please feel free to drop into the Etsy shop and send us a message. You can attach a photo that way and um, let us know if it's okay to share it with the community because all next week, I wanna share everybody's updated blanket photos because next Friday, is December, oh my gosh, December the 1st, and that means first Friday of the month as well. So our final installment for the uh, Fair Isle style monthly edition will be coming next Friday. And then we do have a, a border, we will be doing a border for this year's blanket as well. And that will be coming out shortly thereafter because we know a lot of you are kind of trying to get them done. You've got either A, uh, Christmas gifts to make or other stuff to work on, or B, you are actually giving it away as a gift. So we know you like to get it done a bit ahead of schedule. So we are wrapping up the Fair Isle style blanket very soon. Joy, thank you so much. Joy, picking up a pat at the Etsy shop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So for the people that have joined us a little late, we have a sneaky sale every day this week. And what's today's sneaky sale? Today's sneaky sale is the Sweetheart Gift Bag, which is the pattern that this Christmas bag is being built off of. Um, so of course you can uh, use that pattern and really any yarn and hook size you like to get the kind of desired size or color or feel. Um, that pattern also includes the um, crocheted drawstrings, which have little hearts at the end of it. Um, but I will be using sort of ribbon or cord today. You are welcome to do that too. You can also decorate these bags um, and further personalize them. Uh, depending on what kind of time we've got going on today, I might do that too. Um, so yeah, that's today's sneaky little sale. And tomorrow is Black Friday. We do have a Black Friday sale going on tomorrow. It's the biggest sale of the year we do. And we're looking forward to that. So. Black Friday is really kind of fun. I love the I love the notion of it. We've started doing it a lot up here in Canada too. Um, I have friends who take that Friday off of work and they go do all of their their Christmas shopping, and um, and then when they're back on Monday, we get to hear what they they went and found and if they got any good deals. And I just love that. It's kind of it's kind of fun. It's a it's a quirky little. Um, a quirky little event that you know kind of we, we just started doing it here because so often in the last i guess couple of decades canadians would go south of the border to take part in the black friday sales south of the border so real retailers up here were like uh we're losing out maybe we should do something about that <laughs> all right let me see where i'm at oh it's still working. I just love this. Look at this peppermint candy cane. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Three so, more rows for me to go. Someone said that um, you're, you're, because your tension is so consistent, that's why you ended up with those stripes. Is that correct? Um, the tension being consistent helps, but more to the point, the stitch count does not change. So um, the stitch count is even every single row we're not if we were increasing or decreasing it would change up the pattern striping um but it also helps that we're using a little uh, defined shell stitch and oh, okay. the defined I shell see. stitch kind of helps block it off but uh it yeah. looks great i am very pleased with how this is coming together this is going to be a really nice christmas gift bag for the stash great way to use up scraps I would just like to shout out all of our uh, members and subscribers. I'm seeing so many 
names here that we don't typically see. I guess everyone has a chance to see the uh, watch the live stream today because of the holiday. <laughs> yeah, big welcome. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah. We, uh, we, we really like the idea that we get to be company. Awesome. <laughs> we're kind of, uh, we're inviting ourselves into your house. <laughs> Nico! <laughs> Nico, what are you doing in the shop? <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Is Nico lurking in our shop? Nico's lurking everywhere. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> Nico's everywhere all at once. <laughs> oh my goodness. Black Cat has to go to work, but she's just having some coffee. Glad you could hang out with us for a little bit. <laughs> you're gonna Ooh. open a cupboard nico's gonna pop out carol's got food heating up in the oven oh my gosh yum i can smell everyone's uh holiday meals being prepared right now yes oh l um there's a um a, a fun pack of those ocean critters so uh wait till tomorrow because <laughs> it'll be on sale but, today's, um, today's sale is just the one pattern, Yeah. but tomorrow it's going to be the whole shop. Sally! Oh my gosh, thank you, Sally! Oh my goodness, um, I think Sally gifted five memberships. Sis, yes, Sally just gifted five memberships. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me see here who has won. Betty, Tracy, Bobby, Shanine, and Darren. Welcome to the family. Thank you so much, Sally. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Oh my goodness, Kathy! Share the you. love to all our new members. Make sure you check out the community tab because you're going to see a bunch of members content. Yes, and also get over to our website. Um, and um, there's a there's a ton of members content on the members page. Yes, and for subscribers, we have lots of content for subscribers over on the community tab as well. And for everyone, we have free patterns, over fifty of them, um, on the pattern workshop page of our website. So please, if you collect crochet patterns, be sure to avail yourselves of those free patterns that we have for you. Um, they're just, a, our entire website is designed to be a kind of a, a good a library of, of crochet information. So um, if you, you know, have time to spend over there, please feel free to do so. Check out the tools page. We've got charts and all sorts of fun little printables and in addition to patterns and stuff. Hello, 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 everybody. It is a uh, kind of a rainy day here today, but I I kind of love it when it's like this. It, it feels very, very quiet. And I like looking at uh, the rain dripping into puddles. I am getting to the end of this little and this wasn't a full skein so if I run out it's perfectly fine because I have more and I'm happy to use this stuff up I've had it in the stash for quite a while so I'm just gonna go until this ball runs out and then I'll tie in some more we have a brand new channel member Vanessa! Welcome, Vanessa! Welcome, Vanessa! Thank you for joining our membership! Crocus says the sun is shining in Winnipeg, Manitoba. That's nice can get pretty darn cold in Winnipeg. Kelly would like to know, where'd you get your cute stitch marker? Oh, um, this is a, 
this is actually a sewing clip. The idea is that you can kind of clip your fabric together while you're cutting or if you're sewing or something. Um, they come in packages of, I don't know, 25, 30, 40, 50. You can get them um, on Amazon. Actually, I think we might have a link. Uh, um, I think we have an affiliate link for those clips. I don't know if it still works, but not I'll, sure. I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, if you've um, got it handy. At least it'll get you somewhere finding them. Um, my mother-in-law introduced me to these originally, and I love them as stitch markers because they don't require, I don't have to slip them into anything. I don't have to... I don't have to like insert them into a stitch. I just clip them on. So I find them kind of faster to use than your traditional stitch markers. Um, and they're oh, cute. Yes. I do still have it here. Oh, Easy great. stitch marker clips. Yes. So there are sewing clips, but I we'll so far almost use them exclusively for crochet. So. <laughs> And for those of you that love the, let's see, yesterday someone was asked, since I'm here, someone was asking about the clover hooks. I'll put that. We have that affiliate link too. Yeah, we've got those if they're still there. And... Joanne said you got some at Fabricland and Mary Maxim. Oh, great. Oh, I love Fabricland so much. Let's see. Fabricland one... is my is my is my happy place. <laughs> is the um, the wool needle. Everyone's always asking about the wool needle. One more row. Yes, and I the, I have the wool that needles. in here somewhere. Um, the aluminum pony ones. Those ones are really nice, and they come in different colors. There we go. Wool needles. Okay, so we have a few of those. We have um, pony and knitter's pride. Oh yeah, knitter's pride for so sure. So I'll put those two in, and hopefully these affiliate links are still working. Now, what? are the odds that this is going to this has the same amount of color distribution that the original ball did and am i going in the right direction let's see if i can pair it up let's see how exacting i can get here so um this goes red white green red white green so let me get this untangled and I'll see about I'm gonna see if I can pair up my stripes make sure I'm still going in the right direction so red white green red white green okay and that's quite a bit of red so all right I'm this is an experiment let me take this out Here is the red finishing the last ball. Here is the red finishing the new ball. I am going to literally pair up where the color changes. And right at that color change, I'm gonna match those two color changes together. I'm gonna to create the knot. And let's see. Let's see if I can, is that too short? I may have made it too short. Let me try that again. Shouldn't have knotted it too tightly before I went and checked it. Ah, silly me, okay. So what I'm trying to do here is make sure that I have like I'm going to find another piece of that red. This is how long this is how long the red stretch needs to be. So for me to get oh, I really got to maybe I actually do want the whole length of it. All right, let's try this again. Crocus says, I'm not going to Fabric Land on Black Friday. The sewers are crazy. Oh, yeah. We're a crazy bunch. Do not get in the way of sewers and their sharp elbows. <laughs> Have you ever braved Fabric Land on a, on a Black Friday sale or weekend or something? Who, me? Yes. Mm, I don't think so. No? No. There. It's close. It's close. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to see if my little knotting trick works. I'm going to hope that my my color 
changing is relatively consistent. So I'm just going to work over top of this little transition. And it was a bit short, but that's okay. And I'll come back and fix that in a little while. Hey, I think I did it. I think I did it. Doodly do. Yeah, that looks accurate. What are you, some sort of crochet guru genius? <laughs> no, I just OCD enough that I want my stripes <laughs> to continue doing the same. There. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Got it. Woohoo! Hey, show! Yes, uh, it, it, trying to match up the colors, it's, it's doable. It just takes a little bit of time. Luckily, that was really lucky. I didn't even have to fast forward through any of my yarn. So again, with the happy accidents. Look, I'm just, they're just falling out of the sky today. <laughs> I think I'm on my 15th row. I'm going to pause and count it up. I really like the size and shape of this bag. Um, so this, this is not changing the original pattern at all. I'm just sizing up the yarn and the hook. So far, quite delighted. Tanya says she's so far behind on the black on the the fair isle guys if you ever feel you're falling behind on the calendar blanket that we're doing don't panic don't fret it's okay we never take down our videos uh mr and stitches does a, a great job of trying to curate them all in order over on our website we have a specific calendar blanket page on our website so if you ever want to go back and redo one or do one from a previous year because you never got to do one in the first place, they're all there. They're all curated every single video in order that they come out. So if you ever feel like you're falling behind, life happens. You're not falling behind. You're just working on a project in your time. So remember that nobody's ever falling behind and we're not trying to rush anybody through it. So goodness gracious, Lori with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. She says, I am super grateful for this channel and you all. Well, I'm super grateful for you and everyone in the chat. You guys have been the best community. I have so much fun hanging out with you guys. And L with another super chat. Thank you so much, L. We just witnessed the magic of Jada. <laughs> Thank you, L. I feel like uh I feel like I say that was a bit of a happy. I was prepared to fast forward through the yarn to get to the right color if I had to, but I luckily didn't have to. So that was a little bit of magic not not my doing that was just maybe luck all right i have joined my row i'm going to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen woohoo fifteen i have completed fifteen rows i really like that let's give it a measure i know i'm eight inches wide or 20 centimeters and now i am ooh, almost 22 centimeters tall this is not quite the last row eight and a half inches tall so i've got I'm a little taller than i am wide perfect um so now i might want to yeah i don't really need to mark it at all um i'm going to start uh row 16 which is the little scallop row. So it's a little sort of edging that we do across the top here. I'm not going to slip stitch into uh, the next stitch. I'm just gonna start in the top of the row, th or the chain three where I started, um, but I need a little bit of coffee. So if you'll all just excuse me for a minute, I'm gonna go refill my coffee. That is of course, if the mister has left me any, I'll be right back. I have not left her any coffee. She's going to be very upset when she finds an empty pot. <laughs> I think you're going to have to have tea today. Or we'll have to make a new pot.
Okay, tell you what, it only takes a few seconds. I am going to run a little slideshow of what Jade is working on today. We'll take a little miniature uh, pause and I'm going to get some coffee going. Be right back. Imagine my surprise. There's no coffee left. Mm -hmm. You hear the sarcasm in my voice. Mr. and Stitches is going to make us some more coffee. So uh, I will refrain from throwing him back down the well. <laughs> Did get a breath of water, uh, which is fine. I can wet my whistle and keep going. So while he's making some extra coffee. Mm. Yes, Maria. Happy wife means coffee is being made. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I'm going to continue with my little bag. So here we go. I've joined row 15. Like I said, if you wanted to make it taller, you're more than welcome to. Um, a tall bag would look really, really cute. I wonder if I should make it a little bit taller, just a little bit taller. You know what? I am going to add another row. Since I've got all of this extra yarn, um, uh, because I, I finished off that ball and I've got the extra yarn, I'm just going to add another row or two of this shell stitch just to make the bag a little bit taller. I feel like it would be kind of cute a little bit taller. And then I'm going to add that scalloped row to the end. So one, maybe two more rows. So the, the original tutorial and pattern says to go to row 15 before you add the scalloped edging, which like I said, um, works just fine. I hit row 15. It's eight and a half inches tall versus eight inches wide, which is a really nice uh, ratio. But I think just for the fun of it, I'm gonna make this bag a little bit taller um, because I think I can fit more stuff <laughs> into it if it's a little bit taller. And I do have the yarn. So since I've got the yarn here and I'm kind of eager to use it up, I might make a couple of smaller versions of this uh, with the rest of this yarn. It's always nice to have different sized gift bags. And like I said, you can start this pattern with a foundation chain that's any multiple of three. Um, so this one starts with a chain of 30, but if you wanted wider, you could make it more foundation chains, your foundation chain row. So more chains, as long as it's a multiple of three. Uh, and if you wanted them smaller, you could make a foundation chain that is less, but still a multiple of three. So like 15, 21, 12, if it's really tiny. Although I think 12 might be too small, but I like 30, 30 is kind of a nice size. Um, and then of course you can add as many rows of the shell stitch as you want. I'm putting in this, oops. I'm thinking maybe after this, I'm gonna do two extra rows over and above the 15 that the pattern originally called for, just because I think I want it to be slightly taller. This is cute. Okay, one more row of this, and then I will go to the little scalloped edge. I can't help myself. <laughs> I just want it to be a little bit taller. 
So instead of 15 rows of the shell stitch, or I should say instead of 14 rows total of the shell stitch, I'm doing 16 rows total of the shell stitch, just so it's a little bit taller. I can hear the coffee maker rumbling away, so I am, I can feel my mood soaring. <laughs> Nothing like a hot coffee to look forward to. I love it. It's the simple things in life. Get some slack on my yarn here. zip through this row and then we'll put on the scallop edging and then we'll pick a nice cord or ribbon. I've got cord that I like which is a bit dark but I think I, I have this ribbon that's like the perfect red color which I think I'm already gonna use and I've even got a little bow I might add. I don't know we'll see. I like rating my my little bag of odds and ends Krista would like to know if you could repeat the type of yarn you're using. Sure. Uh, this is a size four, medium weight, acrylic yarn. It's got a little tinsel running through it. It's um, the Burnett Happy Holidays yarn. I don't know if they make it anymore or if they're just making it under a different name because I'm pretty sure this is an older, um, older ball. Let me see if there's even a date on it somehow. Mm. This is the colorway mistletoe. And if there's a pattern on the back, oh, there's a pattern on the inside. So this might actually have a copyright. Let's see. I, have to un I don't really want to unclip this, but maybe I will. Untape it. All right, let's see here. Doodly do. This has abbreviations, washing instructions, French on one side, English on the other. I don't see a date. Sometimes there's a little date, like they have a copyright date, but they don't have any date on this. Hmm. Oh, wait, I found one. Copyright, 1996. So there you go. This was printed in 1996. Um, so they, my gosh, this is almost a 20 year old ball of yarn. You've had that yarn since 96? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Have we slipped what? into- How have, old are you? Have I slipped into a time warp or something? How is, how I is this- I think you've been lying about your age, Missy. This is, this is an 18 year old, almost 18 year old ball of yarn. I'm gonna have to check the, uh, the wedding agreement. Or is that 30? Wait. 96? 96, that's, 96 like that's almost 30. Seven years? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. Whew, okay. I have to go through your yarn stash and figure out how old you actually are. I gotta I gotta pause and take a moment and just uh, me. twenty seven years. Twenty seven yeah. years. I do can't you, even do you remember buying that like off new off the shelf or was it given to you? Uh oh no, I bought this. Uh huh. Yeah. See you just gave yourself away. I, I... You were supposed to say I think it was given oh, to you. Oh, it me. was second hand. It was totally <laughs> handed down. Yeah. No. I think I just tripped over it on the sidewalk. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I Brittany's bought this. Brittany's having a good laugh. Oh my gosh. Michaela says, I'm one year older than that yarn. <laughs> Brittany was born in 96. Oh my gosh. No, Michaela. Michaela was born in 95, I guess. Well, to be fair, I was still in high school when I bought this yarn. <laughs> I was, uh, I was. We're all having a good giggle at, at Jada's expense. I was, uh, this is the tail end of high school for me. So, uh, um, that just tells you how long I've been into this stuff. 
forever and ever and ever. All right, though, so that was an extra couple rows of the shell stitch. It's now taller, which I like. So now we are approaching the 10 inch mark. I think that's a nice height for the bag, 25 centimeters almost. Coffee so, is ready, my dear. Ooh, oh, I'm coming, I gotta grab a coffee. Okay, one second, everybody. Right. Coffee refilled. Ah. Uh, delicious. Thank you, mister, for the refill. Thank you, Nico, for gifting another membership. My goodness. Shannon has won it. Welcome to the family, Shannon. Holy smokes. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful bunch you all are. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm going to add the edging now. So this is the final row of this little gift bag pattern. It's a little scalloped edge and it just kind of ends off the bag. It just gives it a, like a cute little finish. And uh, you don't have to, you just, once you join your final row on the top of the chain three, you don't have to slip stitch anywhere. We just start right here. So we're going to chain two. I'm going to have, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to double crochet into the next stitch which would be the middle shell stitch or the middle stitch of the shell. So chain two from right from joining, double crochet into the next stitch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chain two and slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're working these little scallops right on top of the shells from the previous row. This is what it looks like usually. So that was from starting the row, but here we go. So when you approach a shell, so there's your three double crochet, slip stitch into the first stitch of the shell, chain two, double crochet just once into the middle stitch, chain two, and then slip stitch into the top of the third stitch. So you've got these cute <laughs> little mini scallops going bunk, bunk, bunk all the way across the top of your shell. So these are also in alignment with your shells from the previous row. So slip stitch, chain two, double crochet into the middle stitch, chain two, and slip stitch into the next stitch. Nice and simple, real cute. It's like a little, a little upside down, or not really upside down, but it's like a little M where the middle of the M goes right down to the M, like a McDonald's M. Does the, does the M, does the McDonald's M go all the way down the golden arches? It does, right? The M, the middle of that M touches the bottom of the, like it's in alignment with its feet. Mister? Oh, you're asking me. <laughs> I didn't realize you were talking to me. <laughs> if that's um, right, you right? Know the, what? Let me go check. The, the, the golden arches. Because our internet is better. That's right, we can. Let me see, McDonald's. So basically you're McDonald's making a logo. You're you're making a little a little McDonald's logo across the top. <laughs> um it the the center the center almost goes almost to the yes, bottom. Okay. It's not quite as low, but it's almost there. All right. Well, it is kind of like a little arc. Mhm. Mm If you've got to go, take care, have a cozy day. If you're uh, celebrating Thanksgiving with family or friends, have a wonderful day. Um, it is uh, so nice that you were able to pop in and spend a little time with us. And if you're still here, then I am so glad that you're able to hang out with us while we work away at this little bag. This has been a fun week, marathon week of live streams, live crochet alongs.
Isn't that cute? Just that, just that simple little bumpity bumpity bump running all the way across the top. I just love finishing bags with that. I just think it's so cute. Nice and simple. Doesn't use up a lot of yarn. It's kind of a nice way to finish off. And if you, um, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could finish off your last row of shell stitch and then join a completely new color and do this little thing around the edge and have a completely different um, edging. Uh, Krista's just recently done that. Krista's made a couple of, of uh, bags that she sent me and she changed up the, the edging with a different color. It looks really chic. How's that coffee, eh? Oh. Uh-huh. Pretty great. Pretty good, eh? 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10. I'd say it's a 10 out of 10. Hmm. Lovely. Nice and hot. Oh, my goodness. Linda! Linda with a membership milestone. Hey, Linda. Linda's been a member for 56 months. My goodness. Thank you. And she says, I was 25 when Jada purchased that yarn. <laughs> Ah, youth. I know, I can't believe I've had this yarn for that long. It's, uh, can I just say how well it's holding up? I mean, my gosh, it looks like I bought it, like, yesterday. See, yarn doesn't have an Seriously, expiry date. Seriously, um, it does, like, the color and everything still looks really good. Yarn does not have a... I was 96. <laughs> yarn does not have an expiry date, so... Stock up. Is that acrylic? Yes. Okay, it holds its color it well. It sure does. Yeah. How was it stored, asks Charlie. Um, probably in Tupperware, some sort of uh, plastic bin. In Rubbermaid, yeah. Rubbermaid bins? I typically store most of my yarn in Rubbermaid uh, bins with the nice tight-fitting um, lids. And then sometimes I pull it out and have it on the shelf. Like, I've had this one on the shelf for a couple years, but um, it's actually, because it's Christmas yarn, I usually have it tucked into to the shelf behind other yarns because... I don't need the Christmas yarn all year round. So I, I know where it is, but I just kind of like have it tucked out of sight. So it has not been getting a lot of direct sunlight, if any. So I will say that. Okay, so I have joined my last little bumpity bump, my last little scallop there. That's it. I don't have to slip stitch anywhere else. I'm just going to fasten off now and weave in that tail. There we go. And tail gets woven in on the inside. Oh, this is so cute. Gosh, I love how that worked out. That would make a fantastic gift wrapper. Mm -hmm. Giving someone a Christmas gift. That's the idea. How cute is that? That is the idea. Very festive. Mm -hmm. Someone mentioned earlier you should put jingle bells on the uh, twist on the tie the tie string. Oh, I like that idea. That would be cute, eh? Jingle bells. Um, Batman smells. <laughs> maybe some some cute like fake mistletoe or okay um, a pine, a, pine cones. Pine cones. Do you know how good pine cones would look against that? Yeah, that would look amazing. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Mister's getting all excited. Crochet engineering. Crochet engineer. Well, I'd love to see you crochet a pine cone. That'd be pretty cool. Haven't you done a pine cone? No, I've done acorns. Acorns oh, would acorns. look super adorable yes. on this too. We should do a pine cone. I'm sure there's something out there. I'm sure there's patterns out there. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's patterns out there. <laughs> I would uh, I would give it a go at trying my own, but for sure, probably not today. I think no. Um, that that pine cone, the pine cone would probably make good use of that Fib Fibonacci sequence. Is it Fibonacci? That really cool math concept. 
Yes. Um, but I have other plans for this. So a quick sip of coffee. Jada has other plans. Georgie's asking how the needle case is coming along. I am not working on that right now. Um, I will be working on that again later. But since you sent me those photos of that of that little needle case with the little hat, now I'm like wondering if I should completely change the the design because I like it. I like it looking like a hat. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add. Look at this. Just just slap slapping that that ribbon down. I, I there's just something so pretty about that. Oh my gosh. I'm going to use some ribbon as my drawstring. Elle, hi Elle, thank you so much for the super chat. Elle wants to know who has Christmas decor up now. I have started. Um, I've got some, uh, a couple of stockings out. Actually, I've got a lot of stockings out. Um, haven't got any Christmas lights up yet, but they're coming. I'm going to... You've, uh, you've done a little decorating with the snowflakes. Yes, yes. I've added some Christmas... A little couple of... that Some um, uh, crochet snowflakes hanging around that, outside and inside. The crochet snowflakes we made last Monday, so not this... A couple this, weeks ago. Yeah, not this past Monday, but the Monday last week. Um, I made one in that macrame, um, that big, solid, thick macrame cording, and I hung it outside, and it's weathering beautifully. It's been... In, the wind doesn't bother it, the snow doesn't bother it, um, so it looks really cute. And uh, the big fluffy one I made with the blanket yarn I have hanging in our front window. So uh, yes, I did start decorating. Um, I'm going to thread up my ribbon in my yarn needle and I'm going to weave it through. So this is, I'm going to go down, here's the, the scallop row, the last row of shell stitch and the row before. So the second last row of shell stitch, I'm just going to weave this in and out between the spaces of the shell stitch row. And I will trim whatever uh, ribbon I don't need. I don't want it to be too, too short or too long, but I'm not going to cut it until I know how much I want to use. Oh, so nice. Okay, let's put you up the other side. And I'm just going to weave in and out. Sally asks, will you be bringing back the Granny Square game? Yes, we will. Absolutely. We, um, did... We've been meaning to this summer. Yes, we didn't get around to it. it we just... didn't get around to it. But uh, absolutely, we do plan on that. Um, however, I did. We, um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware of the app. We have an app you can play with uh, friends or yourself. And I uh, recently put it also on our website. So you can get the videos and the gameplay for uh, on the website um, but we do plan to um, hopefully sooner rather than later I guess yes um, it's just a, it's just a logistical thing we want to try and be in the same room with each other um, because speak there's a lot yourself. going on when we speak play that game <laughs> what I said speak for yourself <laughs> take your pardon <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> Um, it does work better if we're in the same room. Yes. Okay, so. But we could try it. We could try it the way we're set up and just kind of see how it goes, do a little experiment. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I won't be able to um, punish Jada when she cheats. <laughs> and there's always a lot of cheating there's going always on. Always some cheating. She likes to cheat. I'm trying to decide. I also, I, I kind of rated my, my little bag of odds and ends to sort of see if I'm not sure if I want to add these these tassels or not eh, they don't really match um, I do have bells I just happen to have some jingle bells because who doesn't I kind of like that yeah I kind of like that so um, I don't need much yarn I th just trying to decide how long to make these ties I want to be able to tie a bow um, but then, of course, you cinch it shut. So, um, Mister, do we still have the the little um, uh, lighter nearby? It's not nearby. It's no, not... it's buried. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, it's buried I, in a box. I'm using a I'm using a acrylic ribbon or whatever this is. It's definitely man made fibers. So the ends of ribbon tends to um, 
fray. So if you just want to quickly run a little lighter across the end of it, it'll melt the fibers um, and they'll kind of become sort of gluey and they will not uh, fray on you anymore. You can also use some some fray check uh, or a bit of a bit of Mod Podge or something too. But I just find a a, a lighter is quicker and it uh, it it doesn't it dries and cools like almost immediately, so you don't have to wait for like glue to finish. Um, but I will do that later. I will take care of my ends later. But I think I will add. I will add some. The bells. jingle bells are a hit. Yeah, those are absolutely too cute. Um, question is, how am I gonna? Maybe I'll. Can we? Uh, can we hear them? Can you give them a little shake by the microphone? Let's get them both going. Very cute. It's a nice little sound. It is. <laughs> Perfect. It's very holiday. Um, okay, so I'm going to <laughs> tie little bows, I think. Maybe I need a little bit of extra. So I'm just going to tie these on with a little bow. And like I said, I'm going to come back with my, uh, my little lighter a little later on. And I will now in order to keep this from undoing, I might like uh, you could run a little needle and thread through the middle of the bow. So you see, I tied a little bow. That's to keep my my bell on um, just to keep this from fraying. I'm going to run the lighter over it a little later. But if you didn't want your bows to undo, you could just run a needle and thread back and forth through the center of that a couple times um, and that would keep it from undoing. And I'm going to tie another bow over here. Couple of bows and then like I said I'm gonna sort of just finish the edges a little bit so there's my two drawstrings or my one drawstring taken care of so then when I cinch it up of course you can tie a little knot and that's a decent sized bag I really like the sort of flow of that uh, but since we're having a good time here I had another idea I thought I might also add an applique to this um, so if you all don't mind hanging around for a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to crochet up one of those little granny, granny trees, granny shell trees, and I'm going to stitch it onto the front because I just think that that would be like a cute little addition to this. I'm going to stick with the same hook. Country Darlin! Hi, Country Darlin! Country Darlin with a super generous super chat. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, and L, L with another super chat. We needed a pattern for a mailbox greenery with bow for my mom's new architectural Santa mailbox I bought for her, please with a bunny on top. A mailbox greenery, mailbox greenery. Like, um... Is, like, is, that... is that like when you decorate for for like the Christmas holidays with... Um, Little bows of... Pine, um, like pine... Or I should say or boughs, cedar, boughs of pine. Um, pine cones, things like that. What about one of these, L? <laughs> this is a, um, I showed this a little bit earlier. It's a super jumbo uh, yarn, one of using that little simple uh, wreath pattern that we have for free over on our website. Um, I think we also did a tutorial for this. I'll make sure that we have a link for that down below somewhere. Uh, but yeah, like that would be kind of cute. Um, but greenery, I think you mean like, like, like boughs, boughs? I think so, boughs of greenery. Okay, um, I'm going to grab some green yarn. This isn't exactly the right green, but I don't feel like it's, I think I might have some darker green. Let me just see here. I've got, I like this green. It's not exactly the same color, but I, I feel like if it's gonna be a little tree, it should stand out a bit. So I've got that. And 
also got this darker green. I think I might go with a lighter green. I've also got some darker green. Mm, light green or dark green, guys, for the little tree. While I sip my coffee. Okay, dark light. Be daring, don't match the yarn, says Dizzy. I dark, kind of dark, agree. Dark, dark, light. dark, light. Dark, 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 light. Dark, 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 light. <laughs> darky, darky, dark, 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 dark. Okay, sounds like dark it is. It sounds like dark is winning. All right, dark it is. So, uh, this is also size four, medium weight acrylic yarn. This is Burnat Premium in the color Evergreen. Pretty sure this is Evergreen. Yep, this is Evergreen. Or if you're French, conifer. And I'm going to make our granny shell stitch Christmas tree. Um, we also have a pattern and a tutorial for this. The tutorial should be linked in the description box. Uh, if it's not, we'll add it later. Uh, Mr. and Stitches can also toss it into the chat here. Um, I'm going to use the same hook, so it's going to be a bit smaller, uh, but I could also like use a bigger hook to make it bigger. I could use an even smaller hook to make it even smaller. We're going to begin with a slip stitch and a chain of four to make a ring. You could also use a cinch circle if you wanted to, but typically with like granny shell stuff, I kind of like to start with a chained ring. Depends on, I suppose, the center of the granny square that I'm going for, but in this case it's just your plain old granny shell stitch. Chain three, two double crochet, into the middle of the ring. I can get my little bag kind of to the side here so we can see better what I'm doing. I'm gonna chain two for the corner and into the same ring, I'm gonna repeat this three double crochet, chain two twice more. So basically making a granny triangle as opposed to a granny square. So a base of three shells, not four. Working over top of that short tail so I don't have to weave it in later. There we go. Chain two, and I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. That completes row one. And I like to start in corner spaces, so that down, pull out those corners so I can really see that triangle. I'm going to slip stitch across the next two stitches and into the chain two space, just so I'm starting in the space. There we go. Lovely. And now I'm doubling up the shell count for row two. So chain three counts as a double crochet, two more double crochet. And before we leave that corner space, Chain two, three double crochet, and a chain one for a little spacer. I'm gonna jump into the next space and I'm gonna do shell, chain two, shell, chain one, or three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain one, in this space and in this space, and I will double up my shell count, oh my gosh, Janice, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. And L with another super chat. Thank you, L. L says, yes, like an oval shaped, like your Christmas tree cone with longer branches, sort of swag crocheted with berries in a crochet bowl. Oval shaped, like your Christmas tree cone. Oh, the Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With longer branches, sort of swag crocheted with berries in a Christmas bow oval shaped like a cone yeah so like like boughs of evergreen yeah yeah i like that idea l i like it indeed i have to give that some thought
Ooh, Shannon, we've got lots of fun little bags that would work as dice bags. Um, it depends on maybe the style you're going for, but we've got a lot of little like animal faced bags that don't have spaces in them. So you can keep smaller things like little dice in them. And um, I don't know if, if uh, they're into Animal Crossing at all, but in our Etsy shop, we've got uh, an Animal Crossing Bells bag that works as a really nice little dice bag. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Make sure you don't forget that last little chain one. And I like to pause and pull out my corners. That's row two completed. There we go. And now I'm gonna do a row of single crochet all the way around. So I'm gonna chain one and single crochet in the same place. Membership gifted from Deanna. Deanna, thank you so much. Deanna has gifted a membership and Pauline has won it. Congratulations, Pauline, welcome to the family. I'm gonna single crochet into each of the next two stitches. That brings me up to the corner. And into the corner, I'm gonna work two single crochet, chain one, two single crochet, all into that space. So I'm just giving a little finishing edge to this little tree. And now I'm going to single crochet in every single stitch and space across to the next chain two corner, making sure I don't miss that first stitch. So single crochet in each of those stitches, single crochet into the chain one space, and single crochet into the next three stitches. Easy peasy. That brings me up to the next corner and it's the same thing, two single crochet, chain one, two single crochet. And like I said, we have a tutorial for this. And if it's not already in the description box, we will make sure it's there after today's live stream. I am posting it to the chat for anyone that wants to bookmark it for later, the original tutorial for the tree. And also we have two super chats that just came in. A uh, big thank you to Lala, Lala Gama, and a big thank you to Elle. Wow, thank you guys. Lala says, happy holidays. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. I couldn't agree more. If you are celebrating Thanksgiving today, I hope it is a wonderful, peaceful, cozy day um, and full of good food and some laughs. And Elle, again, <laughs> with another super chat. Thank you, Elle. Elle says, festive, no sappy mess, and drying out of branches. <laughs> yes, if you crochet your your greenery, then uh, you're not gonna have it drying out and dropping needles all over the place. Couldn't agree more. All right, I'm just rounding the last corner here. I'm gonna single crochet in each stitch up to the middle space, chain, and then I'm not going to chain or anything a single crochet into the chain one space from the previous row. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet. That gives me 33 single crochets all the way around and three little chain one corners. I'm pulling out my corners. Now I want to add just the simplest of little trunks to my tree. So I'm going to chain one right where I am and turn. I'm going to single crochet in the same stitch that I joined in. I'm going to single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And that's it. Chain one turn. Single crochet back across those three stitches I just made. That gives me a very simple little trunk. And if you wanted, you could always add this trunk part with a different color. Nico. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted another membership. Thank you so much. TC has won it. Congratulations, TC. Welcome to the family. We have a lot of new members today. Yes. Big thank you to everyone for your support. Really appreciate it. We must have 20 new members My today. My gosh, at least. Thanks thank to you. our wonderful supporters. That's it for the little tree. I'm going to leave a nice long tail for sewing because I'm going to sew this tree onto the front of my gift bag. Nice long tail. I'm going to fasten off that entire tail. Probably have more than I need, but that's okay. It's better to have more yarn than not enough. And now I'm going to sew it to the front of my little gift bag. Golly, that's cute. 
And you know, if you really had the time and the uh, and the in, in, interest, you could even decorate your little tree with little beads and stuff before you sewed it on. I think I'm gonna leave the jingle bells as the, there's a tinsel running through this yarn. So I think that's like fancy enough. And I kind of like the uh, opposition of the solid color without any tinsel. And um, from here, now you could pin it into place or just do what I do and just hold it. I'm going to pick up a loop on the bag. So this is a loop on a stitch on the actual bag. And then I'm going to go through the edge of the tree applique. And I think I'll just keep making sure that I haven't moved it. I'm going to look for loops of stitches right beneath the edge of the tree. And then I go, I pick up that loop and then I go through the edge of the tree. And this way I'm not sewing all the way through the bag. I won't have any stitching showing to the inside of the bag. Not that that's a big deal, but it's just neat and tidy and it's easy. It doesn't mean that I don't have to like hold the bag awkwardly in one hand while I sew and I won't accidentally sew all the way through. If you're brand new to being a member, I see um, uh, Tammy asked about it. Um, there's an easy way to find out um, what your membership consists of. You can click on the join button at the bottom of like underneath the video, or you can click on, go to the channel homepage. So click on Jada and Stitches. It'll take you to the channel homepage. You click on the memberships tab and it'll tell you uh, what your current membership status is. And it'll also tell you what's involved. And be sure to check out the community tab if you're a member or a subscriber because we are always posting extra little goodies over there for you guys. So I'm just pausing every so often to make sure that I'm not moving my tree out of its position. And I'm just sewing through each stitch all the way around. I'm being like super neat and tidy about this. You don't have to do every single stitch. You could do every other stitch if you wanted to, especially if you were in a bit of a hurry. Um, but uh, the stitches are there, so I'm going to use them. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Unique Amazing Stripes. She says the button will now say C Perks if you click on the join button. That is actually quite helpful. I didn't realize YouTube was doing that, so. Once you get uh, a, a good amount of an applique sewn down, like a, a third or a, even half of it, you don't have to worry about it moving quite as much. All this talk about dinners and foods and ovens and turkeys. My uh, my desk is completely soaked right now. <laughs> You've been salivating this whole time. Salivating all afternoon. Everyone's talking about food. I know. I'm really thankful that Jada made amazing pasta and meatballs. That's going to be our lunch. Oh, yes, I surprised. I surprised Thank hubby. Thank goodness we have that food ready for us. Yes, I'm very glad. Otherwise, we'd be. Otherwise, uh... I'd be fainting right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end a quirky little poll I put up. Oh, I didn't know there was a quirky poll. It's a quirky poll. Those are the best polls. Yes.
Do you have a turkey in the oven right now? No, 69%. Yes, 21%. Maybe later, 8%. Woohoo! Um, so when you use that, I just noticed um, uh, Catherine says, make sure you don't stitch the front to the back. Yes, if you're, if you're using the top facing loops of the bag, then you don't have to worry about that happening. You can see that there's nothing, nothing has been stitched through. So the bag's still nice and open. Uh, that's why I like the surface stitching thing. And once again, all I'm doing is I'm laying my applique down. I look where the edge is. I peel it back a bit and I'm looking for a loop on a stitch of the bag just below it. And then I'm doing each stitch one at a time. So that way, I'll also show you when I'm done, you won't even have any sewing stitches showing through to the inside. Uncle Steve is in the house. Hi, Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve says, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, Uncle Steve. Thank you for the super chat. And uh, I noticed there was a question about the um, the yarn needles. Uh, Avi asked, these are wool needles. Um, we've got a link. We did a whole, we've actually done a couple videos on these. Um, they are really fantastic. They're uh, aluminum, so they're nice and smooth. They've got a nice big plastic eye, like a big loop, so that you don't have to squint or go blind trying to, to, to sort of thread them up. And um, you can get them just about anywhere yarn is sold. So they're typically called wool needles. Um, and lots of different manufacturers make them. Mine are by H.A. Kid. H.A. Uh, Kid also makes them for Walmart under the Love Knitting label. So our local Walmarts all carry them. Uh, Knitter's Pride makes some that usually are sold in sets of three. Pony makes some, so lots of different people make them. Uh, the pony ones are pretty because they come in different colors, so each um, each of the sizes is a slightly different color. go. Oh, I managed to keep this pretty regular, pretty straight. So that, that makes me happy. All right. Rounding the last corner. And then I just have to go around the, um, the stem. These little trees make cute Christmas ornaments too, little hanging ornaments, but um, I like them as an applique. They're so simple. They only take a couple of um, couple of yards of yarn and uh, they're also a nice little scrap buster. Okay. So just down the edge across the bottom of my little stubby little trunk here, tree trunk. There. So now that I'm done sewing, I'm going to just knot my yarn, make a tiny little knot just off to the side here. Just like I would if I was casting or fastening off. There we go. Make sure that's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna weave that tail back and forth just a couple times through these stitches that are right here. And that'll lock it in place. L! <laughs> Hi, L! L with another super chat, thank you. L says, who is at the table, not what is at the table. <laughs> 
What is that? I, did I miss something? I'm not sure. Um, I've been having trouble with the chat box, oh. so I'm kind of trying to catch up with the computer's trying to catch up with our stream. Okay. I hope everyone could still see and hear us okay. I can see it. I can see Elle's uh, super chat. There we go. One little crochet tree, an applique. Fantastic. Can attached... we hear the bells again? I want to hear the bells again. Bell shake. <laughs> Perfect. That looks great. This is really, really cute. Um, yeah. So there we go. That is the the Christmas edition of the gift bag, the sweetheart gift bag, all all whooped up. And I added the, the little applique to the front because it's big enough that I felt I could do that. And um, it just kind of gives it a little extra. Let's tie it up here and see how it looks. So I'm going to finish. Oh, okay. I understand what Al meant. Who is at the table? Not what is on the table. Who is at so the table? So the importance the importance is who is at the table. Oh, I see. Yes. In regards to your Regardless, holiday meal, whatever you're eating, yeah. Yes, Who's at I the understand. table is more okay. important than what. I agree. I agree. Uh, you guys can see and hear us. A Great. meal a meal can be can be fancy or it can be humble, but as long as you're in good company, then it it doesn't really matter what you're eating. I'm going to invite the squirrels and chipmunks to our dinner. Aw, yes. There we go. So I'm going to, um, I'm probably going to finish off my tails properly on my, like I'm going to just uh, add a little, I'm going to run the, the lighter over the edge of the, the tail, the ends of this ribbon, just so they don't want to fray. And then I'll probably tie, tie, retie the bows and just stitch them in place so they don't want to undo on me. Um, yeah, that way they won't, the bells, I won't risk losing the bells off the ends of my ribbon. But I really like the way that looks. I like the little jingle jangle on the end. And that was nice. That didn't take up too much yarn. I finished off a, a ball that was, like, had already been gotten into. So, um, I'm going to say that I probably, I probably used, hmm. Well, let me do a bit of quick math. Um. There's 20, you know what, I'm going to pull up my calculator here. Give me one second, guys. I can figure it out almost to the yard. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, let's say 17 rows. That's 17 rows times 60 stitches per row. And I'm using the double crochet stitch mostly. And I get about eight double crochet to the yard. So if I divide that by eight, I used roughly 130 yards. 130 yards of a size four medium weight yarn with an H or a five millimeter hook. So 130 yards for the bag mostly, and then maybe like 10 yards or less for the tree. So that'll give you kind of a rule of thumb, I guess, to use. So if you're going through your stash and you think, you know, maybe you, you kind of like measure out your yarn or whatever, 130 yards ought to do it. But like I said, you can vary the number of rows in these bags. So if you think you're not going to have enough, just make it a short bag. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions about this particular project or making the little tree or the little bag? I hope, I know everybody's probably got like 500 things on the go. I'm really happy that you picked us to sort of hang out with for a little while. It's a busy weekend. Unique says, my gaps in my bag are too big for a gift bag. Um, if you find that the gaps are too big, go down a hook size. Otherwise, you can still use it as a gift bag. You just want to make sure that whatever you're putting in the gift bag has a little bit of like tissue paper around it or something. And, uh, Thanks, Peaches. Um, it's it's okay to see a little bit of, of uh, tissue paper through it, and I think that actually kind of might look nice. You could even have a bit of the tissue paper sort of sticking out the top when you when you fasten it up. 
if you feel the, the holes are too big for the gift, just put a little, just uh, get a little plastic bag, or if you can have, uh, find a clear bag or yeah, something. clear bag, that. tissue paper. Tissue paper. I think tissue keep papers. inside. Tissue paper is fine, um, but if you want to just make sure that you don't end up with spaces that are too big, just go down a hook size. Because you know how the yarn is. The yarn might say it's in a size 4 medium weight category, but it can be on the super tiny, like the skinnier side. It can also be on the fatter side. Um, our tension varies. Like Even our hooks can change a little bit. Um, so if you feel like that shell stitch is being kind of like too gappy, don't necessarily change your yarn, just go down a hook size and that will tighten up your, your tension and it'll make those, those spaces smaller. I really like the way this came out. Catherine asks, how do you come up with your ideas? I, 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 I give myself, um, I, I, I'm creating solutions. <laughs> Does that make sense? So if I'm like, gee, I'm, if I find myself reaching for a gift bag, I think to myself, hmm, I probably, I probably should have a few gift bags on hand. Well, maybe I'll crochet some gift bags and then I create a solution to that problem, which is I don't have gift bags. I will therefore come up with a funny little, or I will come up with a pattern to fulfill that crochet problem or that thing that I need. Um, that's basically all I do. It's kind of like in, in, I don't know if any of you took like high school art class. One of the common things that they would ask, at least in, in the art classes that I took was they would kind of give you like framework some kind of a, they would propose like an artistic question or an artistic challenge. And then your job in the, you know, whatever it was you were making was to kind of come up with the solution or the answer to that posed question. Well, that's kind of been happening all day. So I think the stream is going through normal. It just looks that way. Okay. Yeah. But we'll find out. I can, uh, now it's back to normal. I didn't have to do anything and I can okay. still see everybody. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So that's just our granny shell stitch Christmas tree. Um, that's the sweetheart gift bag. We'll make sure both links are in the description box down below. And I'll even include some of the notes that I made, like the sort of the slight changes I made to today's bag. I'll include that in the description box as well down there. So if you come back later, um, that information will be handy for you. And of course, we have a more succinct version of both of these um, in tutorial form on the channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, the Sweetheart gift bag is today's sneaky sale over at our Etsy shop, but we are having our big uh, Black Friday sale tomorrow. So um, if you're looking for some, um, some fun deals on crochet patterns or other digital goodies that we've got in our shop, tomorrow is the biggest sale of the year. We do that every year uh, for Black Friday and right through the weekend to Cyber Monday. And um, we know a lot of you wait for that particular sale. So thank you, thank you, thank you if you are planning on doing a little shopping tomorrow. And we will be back tomorrow. Instead of our regularly scheduled video, we will be live streaming again tomorrow because we kind of took this week off. I know I know, we've been hanging out with you guys all week, but uh, we didn't. We usually take a break in August and we never wound up taking a break. Um, so we thought we would take it this week since it's the Thanksgiving week down in the US. And we thought for fun we would live stream because uh, the weather outside is kind of kind of crummy <laughs> so it's not like we're going off to the beach or anything in the <laughs> in late November um, so we've been live streaming every day this week and we've been having a lot of fun and we know that uh, it's a busy week and for a lot of you and we thought we would just live stream every day so we will be live streaming again tomorrow at the same time 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern so if you are done your uh, Black Friday shopping early or you're just not planning on going out, then you've got some company. Please feel free to hang out with us and we will have another little live crochet along for you. Um, so take care, Mr. and Stitches. Do you have anything you'd like to add? No. No. Nope. Um, I think you covered <laughs> everything. And and then some. And then some. Great. Well, um, we'll see everyone tomorrow. We, same time. Yeah, same we'll, place. We'll see you guys all tomorrow. And um, if you've got any questions about the project, you know you can leave them in the comment section down below or on the original uh, tutorial. We do read the pattern comments and questions and we do our best to, to get back to you guys. So um, until tomorrow, have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're celebrating. Have a beautiful, cozy, peaceful day and evening if uh, you're doing anything. <laughs> and we will see you tomorrow right back here. Same bat time, same bat